Hi, I'm Ed. I'm from kickfolio.com. Uh, we're an angel cube company, so we, we only we came into existence about three weeks ago. Uh, and so this is, this is what we're doing. Um, both my co-founder and I, Chris, are app developers and we work freelance, we develop our own stuff and one of the big things that we found is we're really crap at maintaining our own websites. Um, I'm talking to a lot of developers, it's a pretty common problem, you know, you have, you do a lot of projects and you know you should have a website, you know that having a website will drive more sales and, you know, and you know that potential employers will look at your website and, and if it's out of date it looks really bad, but still you don't really keep it updated, so we, we're solving that problem for you. So what Kickfolio does, it makes it really easy to create a single landing page, much like app.net, but it also makes it ridiculously simple to have an entire portfolio and an entire online presence of the apps that you've made. Uh, you can remove the hassle from creating it, like even WordPress, which we all have a massive amount of ability to, to master, or we could we're absolute WordPress ninjas, everyone in this room I imagine, it's still a 10 step, step process to crop the images, to add the text, to add it to your navigation system, to find a theme that you like, all of that, it still takes too long. Uh, so we get rid of all of that for you and make it absolutely dead simple. So I'll show you how we do it. This is an early beta, so, uh, well, sort of halfway between an alpha and a beta. Uh, so the designs aren't final in a lot of situations, well, I'll just show you what it does. So you can immediately go to the website and enter your app's name um, or an iTunes URL uh, straight away. Uh, just in that box there, you don't have to sign up to try it and see how it works at all. We've got some live examples there of really popular apps. So I'll just take you up to my portfolio here. So this design's still being finalized, but here are two apps that I've made that's pulled in all the information for me from iTunes. So the titles and the descriptions, it's all done, it's all cropped the images for me and everything. So I don't have to really do anything. So I'll just add another app now. So just type in an app name, click search. You can also add a blank one. That'll then go to iTunes and find everything from that straight away. So there we go, that's my one. Click that. And suddenly I've got a web page that's just instantly pulled in all the icons, all the screenshots. Uh, reviews was pushed to Git this afternoon. I haven't had time to update the screencast. Um, but we've got all the descriptions in there and you just add it to your folio and, and there, that's it. That's all you need to do to add a, a web page to your portfolio. It's suddenly added right there. One of the other things though that we wanted to solve was editing. We really don't like the fact that you have to go into a different back end to edit your site. Like, you know, this is 2012, it should be a whole lot easier than that. So we've done really obvious things like inline editing. So this title is quite long and we want to reduce that. So you just go up and click on it and type in the new title and press enter and away you go. That's it. You just edited the website. You didn't have to go into a back end. You didn't have to wait for anything to load. Likewise, with adding a description for yourself, uh, just type it in, just tap anywhere and away you go to add stuff to it. Um, I, wanted, I want to also talk about uh, what we're actually doing in the back end. All that image cropping, uh, we do for you. We, we grab the images and we crop them for you. Uh, so we fake it at first. We pull the images initially from iTunes and then we kick them all out to a, to a worker thread and it processes them for you and uploads it to S3 uh, and creates all the proper images. Right now, the Dressify one is all just CSS and, you know, completely faking it. But Ultimately, that'll kick over to the S3 version. It'll look exactly the same. With that, we distribute it to a CDN for you, so you don't have to. It's just instantly in edge locations uh, straight away. You don't have to set up buckets. You don't have to worry about bandwidth and page views and all of that stuff. We just take care of everything for you. So that's what we have now, and uh, this is what we want to do over the next couple of weeks. We've, this is the sort of stuff that we really want to see and uh, a lot of other developers we've spoken to want to see. So, ability to have myname.com pointing to uh, either your folio or to a specific app page. Uh, to send download links direct to a user's device so they tap a button and suddenly an SMS appears on their phone with a download link. Mac, Android and web app support. Not sure if I'm allowed to say the Android word, but... Uh, <laughs> We want to have a WordPress plugin, so if you do have a WordPress site already, you can just embed the portfolio straight into your WordPress. That idea came from Sean. Um, we want to lower the, the analytics point between a click on a website to the, to the app and the user downloading it. So 
by taking people as close as possible to the action of downloading by sending links to their phones. We hope to really do that. Uh, and Facebook portfolio pages as well. Uh, what I haven't mentioned is that all of this is already responsive for you. So your app pages will look exactly will look perfect already uh, on an iPad or on an iPhone. So you don't have to spend any time worrying about you know, how does it work in this browser, how does it work in that browser, it just, it just works. Right now, we only have the one theme, but over time as we get feedback from what people, how people want their apps to, pages to look, we'll add in more themes based on suggestions from the community. Um, this is a bit risky. So we really want anyone who's interested in this just to jump on to the staging server right now and, and have a play, you know, uh, later tonight or tomorrow or even now. And, you know, it's completely rough around the edges and we can't guarantee your data will be safe. Well, I mean, not safe. We can't guarantee it. <laughs> we can't guarantee it won't be deleted. Um, but we just want you to play around and just get in touch with any feature requests you have and let us know how, how you would use it and what you want to see from it because we're app developers and we're making this for you guys so we're, we're really interested to see how you guys would use it. So yeah, any questions? So the plan I imagine is to make this a subscription service? Yeah, ultimately, yeah. Um, so things like the moment you pay you can have a custom domain added and that's all you know included. Uh, you'll be able to register for domains on the site so you won't have to transfer stuff in if you don't want to, like you won't have to go to someone else to do it, we'll manage all that process for you. Even the free plans will include um, uh, unlimited bandwidth and page views. It's all running on Heroku, it's all auto scaled set up so you know if you get fireballed it's going to handle that straight away we hope, but no it will. Um, and so yeah, we're, re we're really excited about it because I can't wait to start using it for myself and I already am in a way, so yeah. Um, we're officially launching the public beta at One More Thing, we're sponsoring uh, the Q&A session at One More Thing at the end of May, so in the meantime just jump on and, and use it. Any other questions? Yep. Anyone? <laughs> um, on the website it says being able to upload um, a simulator build to use the app inside the browser, is that something that's still happening? Oh yeah. Uh, that was the most exciting thing for me. Yeah, it, it, we, we, we're sort of, that only really got confirmed. Um, we've been talking to a company called Peaceable.com who've had the technology for a while. Uh, they haven't really consumerized it and we spoke to them, were really nervous, it was like do we just do it and then hope they don't notice or do we just tell them? And we told them and they were really, really supportive and they're like great, whatever you need, whatever you need to support it. So. For people who haven't seen the website, what that'll mean is that you'll just be able to drag and drop a simulator build straight into the web browser and users will be able to use the app right where you saw the screenshot, they'll be able to just use the app right in the web browser straight away. We'll time limit it at a minute uh, so you'll be able to buy you know, blocks of minutes uh, to use uh, so you, you don't have to worry about users only using the, the web version and then never actually downloading your app, they'll be time limited to, to use it. So it's definitely happening. I would have loved to show it off, but uh, Chris, my co-founder, is bashing his head against the wall at the moment with folder uploads in Chrome and all that sort of stuff, but we're almost there, so really, really excited. Yep? Um, really here. Um, looks like it's right? Thank you. Um, <laughs> One of the things you said at first was that you know, people are having trouble updating their site, but at the mm -hmm. same time, it looks like you've got content coming from two directions. One is self-generated from your app store, yep. blah, blah, blah. And the other one is that you can click on the site and then edit over the top. So how does one take precedence over the other? Will you run into a snowballing cascade of problem updating the site where you've got updates mm -hmm. you've done by hand, but then you've got updates that are coming through after you've got my graph? We don't view uh, iTunes as the data source. We view it as a, a, a source of seed data uh, that you can take to populate so your you website. Your template, so yeah. Yeah, so you can just import the screenshots and... Yeah, done. Um, we, we, the, the issue that we have is that this is a website for you uh, and we would not feel right unless you explicitly told us to uh, to update your website for you with a data from iTunes. If you don't want your description to be updated after an update, we wouldn't feel right doing that. Um, so we see it as a, a source of iTunes as a source of seed data, not as the only source of data. Does that mean that uh, comments and uh, other parts that are ongoing will not be replicated on the website as well? Well, one feature we're toying with is live updating of reviews. So if you have a four star or up review every 24 hours, we'll check your review rating uh, for, for new reviews. What's that? Four 
Oh, well, <laughs> uh, we're, we're just to throw it out there, we're actually looking at uh, the first three apps for free um, and then looking at uh, paid plans beyond that for different features. Um, so any feedback welcome. So sort of like 25 to 50 dollars for just unlimited anything. Um, one of the big things that I'm personally against is ads of any sort. So I promise you right now, we will never, ever, 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 ever have ads on the free version of the site or on the paid version. Um, we will support people putting Google Analytics into their site so they can track it themselves and all of that, but we will never, ever put ads to monetize your content. Yep? Are you worried about the iPad developers that you're targeting to the market? Uh, initially, we, well, initially we want to target a really narrow market because we know iOS developers. Ultimately, I want to go bigger. Uh, my big vision for this is anyone who makes anything, be it clothes or be it iPad apps, to be able to have a place to showcase their work online. And the immediate need is in iOS and, and other app development. Yep. Yeah, which was what my question was going to be. If you're doing most of the app stores, are you going to put ones like the Windows 8 app stores or the Windows 27 app stores? Or like, with all of those online, you can pull that back at CSR also. Yeah, like again, it's it's just a matter of if they have an API, we can plug it in and, and bring it all, bring all the data in. Yeah. How about kidnapping of content? Like someone wants yep. to, you know, say, oh, actually, I developed this site and you know, attached their name to it. And yeah, this has come up a bit from discussions with people about yeah people claiming credit for stuff they haven't done, and we come back to it of of thinking that on Twitter you can claim to be anyone you want. Uh, there's nothing to stop you from putting up a WordPress site that you claim you are someone else. There will be a link down the bottom to say, hang on, I don't think this is right, like a dispute process that we'll implement. Ultimately, we view it as a really good problem, you know, to have in a way, if people view this as a worthwhile enough site to put their, to host their, their landing pages on, we'll, we'll resolve it quickly because it's not right. And we do think that the community will sort them out much like they do on Twitter and on other services. So yeah, it, it is definitely at the forefront and we will have measures in place to report. If you see your app, you know, on there being uh, claimed by someone else, there will be a way to have that removed and have that dealt with. Yep. I see you've got, you've got the ability to put data into iTunes, but if you want to add extra information like a, a, a manual or, or more information like that, will there be space for that? Yeah, uh, I didn't show it and unfortunately I don't have net access so I can't, but you'll be able to just click on the description field for your app and, and add in extra data. You'll be able to add in your Twitter URLs and all of that as well. Will that extend to potentially pages or, or uh, navigable hierarchy? We haven't looked at that yet, but if, if, that's, if there's a lot of demand for sort of multi-level pages for apps, then yeah, we'd definitely look at, at how we could add that in. Okay. Melbourne Cocoa Heads is brought to you by Itty Bitty Apps, but we couldn't do it without the generous sponsorship of Shine Technologies. Thanks also to RMIT for providing the venue, and to our many regular attendees, speakers and volunteers. If you would like to know more about Melbourne Cocoa Heads, you can visit us on the web at melbournecocoaheads.com or by following Melbourne Cocoa on Twitter.